أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فين اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلا لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تآخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال قتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهل قرية استطعما أهلها فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقام قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا فخشينا أن يرهقهما أن يرهقهما طغيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك أن يبلغا أشدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تسطع عليه صبرا Musa 
this is a, a very important lesson, especially for Tullab Ilm, especially for students of knowledge. The Quran is filled with wisdom. There are, I mean, each ayah of Quran can have entire yani, books written, as in the Qayyim al Jawziya wrote, on Iyakin Abudu, Iyakin Asta'in, he wrote an entire book called Madarij al Salikin. But I will, inshallah, summarize some of the benefits for the English speaking audience. And again, this is not an exact translation, it's always the meaning of the translations that we try to present. Musa alayhi salam, he said to Yani Khidr alayhi salam, May I follow you so that you may teach me something of knowledge. SubhanAllah, the first thing we need to pay attention, Musa alayhi salam is a Nabi of Allah. And no doubt from the five greatest Anbiya, from the five greatest Prophets of Allah, the one that's the most mentioned prophet in the whole Quran. In the whole Quran, the most mentioned prophet is Musa alayhi salam. Even with that great status, he is traveling, and again, we'll skip the earlier ayat about how he traveled and got to meet with Khidr, which bina al khilaf, and even the khilaf of ulama, what is Rajah, he's not a Nabi. Khidr alayhi salam, he is a wali of Allah, but not a Nabi. Even if you take him to be a Nabi, he's definitely lower in status than Musa alayhi salam. But even then, Musa alayhi salam is traveling to go to Khidr alayhi salam to study from him. Some people, they have kibbutz. I and mean, today, when you tell them sit in the halaqa or darf or somebody, they like, oh, I know more than that person. You may know more, but that person may know something you don't know. So humble yourself, sit down, and learn something. So he asks him to turn, teach him something from that which he has been taught by Allah. Khidr alayhi salam responds, he goes, Verily, you will not be able to be patient with me. What does that teach you? That one of the qualities you need to seek knowledge is sabr, is patience. Musa alayhi salam tells him that, and how can you have, yani Khidr alayhi salam first tells him, how can you have patience about a thing that you don't know? And you don't know how to seek knowledge with me. Yani, the way that I'm going to teach. But Musa alayhi salam responds goes, if Allah wills, you will find me patient and I will not dis dis disobey you. Musa alayhi salam, look at his beautiful response. He didn't say, I'll be patient. He said, inshallah, and if Allah wills it, remembering that everything is with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also teaches us to say, inshallah. Anytime you want to do something, say, inshallah. This is the Quran. There's many ahadith on it. And you never depend on yourself. Yeah, I'm going to go do this. I got this. I'm, no, always remember only if Allah will. Qadr alayhi salam said, Then if you follow me, ask me not about anything until I myself mention it to you. And there are different styles of teaching. Different teachers teach in different ways. And this is the way of Qadr alayhi salam. That if you know what I'm teaching you from the haq, it's from Allah, then just learn until I feel that you are ready for me to disclose why. And this should teach us a patience. Sometimes a teacher wants you to study a particular subject or in a particular manner or a particular book. And then you may think, no, it's better if I do it this other way. Some people, you tell them, let's study fiqh, they say, I want to study this. You tell them, let's study tafsir, they say, I want to study hadith. You tell them, study hadith, they want to study tafsir. You always have to understand that a teacher may guide you in a way that they realize is better for you. So here, Musa alayhi salam, he wants to study with Khidr alayhi salam. Khidr alayhi salam is saying, okay, I will teach you, but then don't ask me what I did and why I did until I myself tell you the reason behind. So they both proceeded until they embarked on a ship. And Khidr scuttled it. Yani he damaged it. And Musa alayhi salam said, have you scuttled it in order to drown its people? Verily you have committed something that is evil. Imra, yani something that is munkar. From the bab of tafsir and from the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam and from the aqwal of sahaba, we know more about this. In, in the tafsir of this, as Imam al-Tabari and others have brought rawayat, 
that when Musa and Khidr alayhum as salam they went, they wanted to cross a river, the people who owned the ship, they were poor people, but they were hospitable, they were people of honor. So they saw these people to be pious, and they knew Khidr alayhi salam to be a man of Allah, and a man of God, a man who followed the ahkam of Allah. So they told him, we will cross you without even charging you, and it will take you across free of charge. And that teaches you a good akhlaq. Yani if you see somebody as a person of religion, to try to do good with them, to drink ikram for them, this is from the way of the, of the pious people. And Allah will benefit them because of their good niyas, you will see. Now Musa alayhi salam, he sees this good deed that these people are doing. And then he sees Khidr alayhi salam chipping away at the, at the boat, making a hole in it, damaging it. So subhanallah, obviously, and Musa alayhi salam, he was somebody who was very strict, in Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahal Munkar. If he saw something wrong, he would stop it with the hand. So when he saw this, he got upset. He goes, I thought of you to be a pious, a scholar, a knowledgeable person. You're doing something that I see as haram. But this is a good lesson for us. Sometimes we don't realize the hikmah behind what Allah has ordained. Sometimes, and I'll give you in tafsir of this, a very short and a beautiful a story from the Salaf which will be in tafsir of this Imam Shafi'i he was a teacher of Imam Ahmad Imam Shafi'i was a great scholar of Islam Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal would praise Imam Shafi'i at home to his children to his family he would talk about the great fadail of the great alim the great zahid Imam Shafi'i one time Imam Shafi'i came to visit his student Imam Ahmad was very happy and his family was very happy, his children were very happy that they would get to meet Imam Ahmad's teacher. So Imam Shafi'i, when he came, the children of Imam Ahmad, Abdullah and Saleh and those that would become scholars themselves someday, they prepared for Imam Shafi'i a bowl of water and a miswak to make ikram for him. Because their father, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, his regular way was that every night he would wake up and they would have for their father water and a miswak ready as good children. He would make wudu, he would do the siwak according to the sunnah, and then he would get up and make qiyam layl for most of the night, or at least a large part of the later part of the night. So they knew that if their father was so pious that he did this, they thought a shafi'i, his father's teacher, must do more. So Imam shafi'i went, he laid down. Now the children of Imam Ahmad, they're trying to see a shafi'i and see what great ibadah he would do. They left the bowl of water, they left the miswak, Imam Shafi laid down. The children kept looking until they got tired, they went and slept. The next morning, a Shafi'i goes to the masjid with Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhuma. And the children noticed the bowl of water is untouched. Now they didn't have like a toilet in the house with a tap or something like this. So when Imam Ahmad and Shafi'i came back and they were having breakfast and things, afterwards, Imam Shafi'i, he, he was resting, Imam Ahmad's children told him, that, oh, our father, you praised the Shafi'i so much. But we saw that he not only didn't get up for Qiyam al-Layl, not only did he not make wudu without water for Qiyam al-Layl, but he prayed Fajr without wudu. How? Because if he didn't make wudu and he was asleep and he went to the masjid, they didn't have bathroom in the masjid at the time, he went without wudu. Imam Ahmad, he did not tolerate anybody to speak ill of his teacher. So he went to a Shafi'i, he said, I want to clarify this. Imam Shafi'i told him that I went and put my head down at night to go to sleep, but one hadith came to my mind. And this is the hadith, it's a very simple hadith about the small brother of Anas ibn Malik, Umair. And he had a little bird named Numer, and he called him Numer. So Rasulullah asked him, that, what did you do with your little bird? The bird was lost. And he was joking and trying to entertain and trying to hearten the child from the loss of his pet. Such a light thing. Imam Shafi, this hadith came to my mind and I kept thinking over it, deriving benefit from it, ahkam of sharia and fiqh from it until Fajr Adhan. So I never went to sleep. And so he went then and prayed Fajr with that wudu he had when he went to bed. And then he asked Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, what would have been more beneficial for the ummah, me to derive these ahkam of sharia or fiqh for the ummah or for me to make my own ibadah at night, Imam Ahmad said, verily you have chosen what is best. Sometimes, so Imam Shafi'i, 
What was zahir to the children that he didn't make qiyam al-layl, he didn't write tahajjud, he went to fajr without wudu. But in reality, he was contemplating ilm all night and he went to fajr with wudu. Then with Khidr alayhi salam, he, he told Musa alayhi salam, did I not tell you that you would not be patient with me? Musa alayhi salam said, call me not to account for what I forgot. And you don't, I forgot about that issue about not having to ask you. So give me a chance basically, right? And be not hard upon me, upon my affairs. And he, take it easy, give me a chance. Then they both proceeded until they met a boy. And he, Khidr alayhi salam, killed that boy. Young boy, under Buru, murdered him. Musa alayhi salam now, yani again, he's somebody who's very strict upon right and wrong. He lost it. He told him, have you killed an innocent person who had killed none? That little child hadn't killed anybody. Verily, you have committed a, a nukr, yani something that is munkar, a prohibited evil act. Khidr alayhi salam told him, didn't I tell you that you would not be able to be patient with me? Musa alayhi salam said, okay, give me one last chance. Again, this is an explanation of the meanings here, right? He said, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company and you have received an excuse from me. There is a lot of hikmah here. I wish I had enough time to explain. Musa alayhi salam, he's asking for another chance, but what is the punishment? What is the horrible punishment? If he fails, he said, then you can kick me out of your company. What does that tell you? Losing company of the pious is one of the worst things that can happen to you. He didn't say you can whip me, you can charge me money, you can take a fine. He says then you can leave me. And if we lose company of the pious, this is a great, especially those people of knowledge, this is a great calamity even if we don't realize it. When the people of knowledge die and they leave this dunya, for the people of this dunya, we may not realize it, but this is a horrible calamity. Worse than losing your wealth, worse than losing your family, worse than losing your houses. These are the people that contain the knowledge of the Akhirah, the knowledge of Allah, the knowledge of the Sharia. When we lose that, it's a great loss, even if we don't realize it. Musa alayhi salam said, if I ask you anything after this, khalas, you can leave me and you have an excuse from me, meaning I'm not going to complain about it. Then they both proceeded till when they came to a people of a town. They asked them for food, but they refused to entertain them. And when they found therein a wall about to collapse, and he, Khidr alayhi salam, set it upright, meaning he fixed it, Musa alayhi salam said, if you had wished, surely you could have taken wages for it. Now, from the Bab al-Tafsir, again, there's many ahadith, Rasulullah explained this, Sahaba explained this, but I'm summarizing here for time. Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi they went to this town. And this town were a cruel people. What was the tradition at that time? And what is the tradition of Sharia today? In our Sharia, what is the tradition that the guest has a right? They have a haqq that you keep them and feed them for three days. If a Muslim comes to this town, not talking about making ikram, not talking about being a good host or being hospitable, it's their right. It's their right that we as the Muslims of this town keep them, give them a place to stay and feed them for three days and three nights. Past that is ikram. Past that is your being hospitable. Today we forget if somebody comes to our house and we give him a cup of water, we're like, man, I'm such a generous guy. I give him a cup of water. <laughs> it's because we're, we got our mindset twisted. So now these people, when Musa alayhi salam, Khidr alayhi salam came, not only did they did not extend that basic haqq, but they didn't even sell them food, they didn't give them food. Now Musa alayhi salam, Khidr alayhi salam, at this time, they're also, I mean, they're traveling, I mean, they don't have a lot of wealth and things. And when these people, even when they asked them, can you help us, we're travelers, they turned them away. Khidr alayhi salam sees a wall that's breaking, it's falling. He goes and fixes it for them for free. Now Musa alayhi salam, he says, look, and in those people in the ship that helped us for free, you broke their ship. That innocent child, you killed them. These people that didn't help us, you helped them out for free. 
The one that did good to us, you did harm to them. The one that harmed us, you did good to them. I can't take this. Right? Khidr said, this is the parting between me and you. That's it. And I told you, if you ask me one more time, that's it. I will tell you the interpretation of the things which you were unable to be patient to learn. I'm going to tell you why I did what I did. If he was patient, he would have learned it anyway. And maybe benefited more. He said, as for the ship, it belonged to Masakin, to the poor, working in the sea. So I wish to make a defect damaging it, as there was a king behind them seizing every ship by force. There was a king who wanted to invade another country. And it's from the Baba Tafsir. So what he was doing, he was going through the rivers and oceans and, and, and anybody in the kingdom that had an able ship, he was seizing it. He was taking it for them. Now these people, they were poor. And their only means of income was that ship. Now Allah revealed this to Khidr salam, But the people who owned the ship didn't know. All they would know is somebody made a hole in the ship. And damaged it. So they would see that as a hardship. But really Allah protected them through that hardship. It's a lesson to pay attention to. They saw it as harm, but Allah was benefiting them. They what? Saw it as harm. But in reality, it was a benefit for them. When that king came, he saw the ship. It's damaged. They, he let it go. That damage, they can fix it in a few minutes. The damage they can fix. But now, the ship they have, otherwise they wouldn't have a means of earning a risk. As for the boy, his parents were believers. His parents were pious. They were good. And we feared least he should oppress them by a rebellion and disbelief. A lot of tafsir here, but I'm going to summarize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the qadr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew from his qadr and his wisdom that that child when he grew up, he would be disobedient. And not only disobedient, he would be from the people of kufr. And maybe from that, he would be a hardship on his parents until he would lead them to kufr. I mean, there's a lot of tafsir here, but I'm summarizing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to benefit that, those believing parents by taking that child at an age that the child was not baligh. What does that do? The child who's not baligh, he enters Jannah. The child that dies qabl al enters Jannah, even if in the house of the mushrik. What is rajih amongst the qal of al -Iman? And here the parents are pious, so no doubt that child was raised in the house of the Muslim, and he would enter Jannah. And those parents would also then stay upon the religion. And sometimes you have a child, and that child becomes, yani, may Allah protect us all, you know, something bad, and then he tries to be harsh on the parents, and the parents go through stress. Maybe it will make them lose hope in their own faith, or even if it wouldn't take them to kufr, it would take that child to kufr which would cause hardship to those believing parents. So sometimes you lose a child and, and it's of course a, the worst, the one of the worst things you can imagine as a parent. But Allah has a hikmah. Allah has a hikmah that we don't realize. Here these parents don't know. They don't know that child was going, they don't know this. All they know is their child was murdered. So I mean to them it's a tragedy. But in fact, with the wisdom of Allah, it was better for them and the child. So we intended that their Lord should change them for, for them, for one better and righteous and nearer to mercy. From the Bab of Tafsir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them more children that were pious and things like this. But yani, this is uh, a deeper Tafsir. As for the wall, now the last thing, the wall. It belonged to two orphans in the town, two orphan boys. And there was under it a treasure belonging to them. And their father was a righteous man. And your Lord intended that they should attain their age of full strength and take out their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. And I did them not of my own accord. This is the interpretation of those things over which 
you could not hold patience. Subhanallah. So much benefit in these ayat. Pay attention. These parents were pious. Some of the ulema of tafsir said it wasn't even the father and mother, it was in the grandparents. It was in the further up, further away from them in their generations, in the ancestry. But because of that piety, Allah is sending either two anbiya or a nabi and a wali to go protect the risk of those children. Imagine. Today somebody says, if I keep a beard, I won't get a job, I'm not going to have risk. If I wear hijab or niqab, I'm not going to have risk. If I follow the sharia and don't deal with riba, I'm not going to get risk. I'm not going to get a job, I'm not going to be able to work. If I keep my pants above my ankles, nobody's going to hire me. And in all these weak-minded, weak yaqeen, weak iman ideas. But look at the Qur'an. Allah sent anbiya to protect the risk of those whose parents, if you are pious, don't worry about your risk and don't worry about the risk of your children. Allah will make a way. Allah will make a way. Here, the treasure belongs to these orphans. Parents have died, but they're young. If that wall fell and those people who were cruel people, evil people, found that treasure, there's no way they would let those little children have it. They would take it from them by force or by trickery. So Allah sent Musa and Khidr السلام, to go protect the risk of those children because of the piety of their parents. Now the Musa السلام, he fixes the wall. So when the wall later on falls and that treasure is exposed, those children will be big and strong and be able to defend themselves and their mal. So many beneficial points. We hope that this will encourage people to read the Quran and tafsir and learn more. Insha'Allah Ta'ala wa jazakumullahu khairan.